What's up, guys? This is Josh Haynes coming at you. I hope you're having a fantastic Tuesday. Today is January 21st, 2020. Uh, me and my wife just got back from Chattanooga, Tennessee uh, yesterday. Uh, we went there for our 12th wedding anniversary, had a lot of fun, got to see the aquarium, got to go on top of Lookout Mountain. Uh, just did a lot of sightseeing, and it was a lot of fun. We had a great time. But before I get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I do want to remind you guys to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's very much appreciated. Hit that notification bell, and feel free to leave any comments below. Uh, that is certainly welcome, and I appreciate that. So I had a few moments in my day, and I thought I would take a few moments to uh, go over some of the guitars in my arsenal that I use pretty regularly. I'm not going to go through everything that I have. I uh, might pull out a couple of guitars that I've had for a while and have interesting stories behind them just to share with you. Uh, but I'm mainly going to concentrate on the ones I use pretty regularly. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to start off with my first venture into Music Man guitars. This is a limited edition Music Man Luke 3, Steve Lukather's signature guitar. Uh, you've probably seen me play this on the Airwolf theme uh, video that I did uh, a few years ago. Um, I got this in 2013 from Music 123, and basically these are normally made of alder. This one is made of African mahogany with a flame maple top, which is absolutely gorgeous. We're sporting two DiMarzio Transition Humbucker pickups, which are Steve Lukather's signature pickups with DiMarzio. Uh, we've got a volume, a tone. And this does have a 15 dB boost, which normally they would be on the volume, but on this run, it's on the tone. Uh, I guess later, Luke at their, Steve Luke at their preferred it on the volume, not sure. But 5-way selector, all rosewood neck with a soft V-shape, shower locking tuners, 22 nickel frets, I believe. And um, what's interesting, too, is I learned uh, from NAM 2020, I didn't go there, Actually, I've never been to NAMM, but anyways, I learned that um, with the new Steve Lukather models at Music Man, that they've actually changed the pickups to uh, Music Man's own set of humbuckers. So I don't know if that means Steve Lukather is ending his endorsement with DeMarzio. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, in 2020, as far as I know, at least, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the new Steve Lukather signature guitars are going to be sporting Music Man Electronics as opposed to DiMarzio. So, a little tidbit there. Oh, and we've also got a uh, compensated nut right here that's really cool. Uh, kind of helps intonation overall up and down the neck so that chords sound better in tune. So, but yeah, this thing plays really good and uh, sounds really good. There's a lot of styles that this guitar can cover, and I highly recommend it. So, there you go. Music Man L3, Steve Look at their signature guitar in a limited Bally Burst finish. Okay. So, here's the guitar I've had the longest. This is a Fender by Squire um, Stratocaster with a Floyd. It originally had a Floyd Rose 2 on it. This is a uh, original Floyd Rose in an HSS configuration and you can tell it's been heavily modified. It started off life with what's called a photo finish um, or photo flame finish which was a god-awful finish. That finish was crap. Basically all they do is they laminate this fake finish onto the guitar and it does not age well at all. In fact the finish just peels off. So um, I had this repainted by my wife's uncle Barry so it's got a kind of this orange uh, sparkle thing going and uh, on the back is kind of a penny uh, color. And if you can look closely, you can see that there's a, there's a few lines that separate the top and the bottom finishes. And of course I had uh, the front replaced with this uh, kind of decal looking thing. And of course Barry uh, painted the headstock to match uh, the body. I uh, had it refretted, and um, I generally don't play it because I'm not a Floyd Rose guy, and I've uh, taken on a liking to have to preferring the sound of passive pickups over active. I still use active occasionally, but and plus, I just hadn't played this thing in a long time, and it's a cool guitar. Uh, I've definitely put my uh, years of wear into it. I got this guitar in '96. Uh, at the time, I was working at this uh, water park in Memphis called Wild Water and Wheels. Uh, some folks from Memphis might remember it as Adventure River. 
and uh, saved up some money and picked this up at a place called Bob Fisher's Music Town that was on Summer Avenue, and uh, that store is no longer around anymore. So yeah, um, it's technically my first Strat, and it's a cool guitar, but like I said, I don't play it often, really. I just, as far as Floyd Roses go, and this is the only guitar I have that has a Floyd, um, I find them to be very clunky feeling because there's so much metal there. And of course you got the detuner there that I installed later. Uh, but generally speaking, I prefer the vintage, uh, trims over the, over the Floyds. And that's not to say that Floyds aren't great bridges. They're definitely, uh, cool bridges if you want to keep in tune, but I don't use the trim abusively to the point to where it goes out of tune. So I don't really see the need. Uh, in me personally having a Floyd so but who knows I might uh, I might uh, premiere this on a video I do later but anyways yeah there you go so and of course the pickups were replaced with the MGs that's a EMG 85 and these two are essays as far as the as far as the knob layout uh, volume master tone and this is just a dummy uh, dummy tone it doesn't do anything so it's just there for aesthetics so there you go, Fender by Squire Strat, heavily modified. All right, so here we have a Fender made in Mexico Stratocaster that I've had for almost 22 years. I got this guitar in 98 uh, with the help of my mother. We bought this from Bob Fisher's Music Town on Summer Avenue, which uh, Bob Fisher's Music Town is no longer around. Uh, that was 22 years ago. Uh, as you can tell, it's been heavily modified. Uh, it used to be Lake Placid Blue, but in 2009, my wife's Uncle Barry stripped the finish and repainted it this really amazing uh, blue color uh, using auto paint. And uh, um, I know you can't tell on the camera, but um, as far as like the shimmer and the sparkle, um, the paint consists of crushed glass and mirror. So under lights and on stage, this thing looks amazing. So as far as the modifications I've done to it, um, I replaced the original pickups with the EMG DG20 David Gilmore pickups. These are SA pickups by EMG, and it's got active circuitry. We've got a bass treble boost right here and a presence boost right here, which the presence boost gives the single coils more of a P90 slash humbucker-ish flare to them. I actually have that on all the time when I'm using it, and it just really uh, makes the pickups stand out. Rosewood fretboard, maple neck, and I've had this thing refretted once with uh, jumbo frets. <clears throat> as far as the bridge, we've got Callaham saddles and a Callaham trim block, which helps with sustain. We've got shallower locking tuners and an aluminum brushed finish. You can see where I try to put a string tree right here and uh, <laughs> wasn't successful so that didn't end up staying so yeah I've had this guitar a long time and the thing is is um, I still use it to this day so despite it being a Mexican strut I can stand behind it and say that this guitar has served me well for 20 plus years so highly recommend a Mexican strut if you just want something to uh, kind of full width and replace parts on it. It can be a great guitar for you for years to come And this one I can honestly tell you after 20 years has been a great guitar This is a St. Blues Guitars Blind Sider that was custom made for me in this nice dark blue finish. It's kind of a burst if you look closely um, It's got a Powell Ferro fretboard with these tortoise shell inlays Spurzel locking tuners, uh, maple back. Oh, and you can see I played this guitar for quite a bit. It has uh, has a nitro finish on this, and as you can see, nitro uh, doesn't hold up well in temperatures and can easily be rubbed off. Um, it's got a Wilkinson bridge, and on here, it's got this uh, stacked knob right here. So it's basically two knobs in one. So this right here gives you bass treble, and this one gives you mids. So I had that put on there. Um, the pickups that originally that I originally had installed in here were James Tyler pickups. This was a Sharp, and these two were James Tyler. But I got to be honest with you, I was not very happy with them. I thought the Sharp was uh, 
not as advertised. It was very low output, and to me, it just didn't sound good, and I took a chance on it. So I ended up replacing that with a Sir Aldrich, which blows away that James Tyler that was in there. And then I replaced the neck pickup with a Seymour Duncan SSL4, which that comes on the Richie Blackmore uh, signature strats. So, and on the Wilkinson, it's got the string saber saddles right there. Um, and uh, I believe this is uh, outer body with binding right here. It looks cool. So yeah, St. Blues built this for me. And it's a cool guitar. I hadn't played it in a while. I might need to resurrect it. But nonetheless, you can definitely tell it's been played a lot. <laughs> so it's definitely got some battle scarring going on it. So maybe one day I'll pull it back out of the, the woodworks. But And the serial number is actually written on there in uh, Silver Magic Marker. Made in the USA. St. Blues Guitars. All right, so this here is a Music Man John Petrucci signature guitar. This is the JP-12. Um, and like my Music Man Luke 3 that I showed previously, this is also a limited edition in a ballet blue burst. Uh, we've got an African mahogany body with a quilted maple top, the John Petrucci floating tremolo, which stays in pretty good tune. Um, the control layout is uh, pickup selector, volume for the magnetics, tone for the magnetics, which also acts as a coil split when you pull it up. And then that's piezo volume for the piezo pickups and the saddles. And then uh, that's your pickup selector. And then this right here selects up if you want the piezo or the acoustic sound. Middle is both magnetics and piezo. And then down is just magnetics. And this guitar is really cool. Ebony fretboard with 24 stainless steel frets, and it's got the John Petrucci shield inlays, as well as the Ernie Ball Family Reserve emblem on the 12th fret. What makes this guitar interesting is its radius. It's got a very flat radius, kind of that of a classical guitar. It's a 20-inch radius, whereas the Majesty I have, which I, I might do a video later on that, has a 17-inch radius, which is a little more rounder. I do prefer the feel of the Majesty neck, even though this one feels pretty good. Um, as far as that goes, uh, I think the JP-13s have a 17-inch radius. So if you wanted uh, a less flatter uh, neck, the JP-13s are pretty cool. Uh, but, uh, but one thing I find with the flatter radius is the uh, neck tends to be more prone to fret buzz. But generally speaking, I don't have that issue too often with this. So you just have to keep that in mind if you're wanting a flatter radius. So um, I know the Sean Lane signature guitar that Vigier makes has a very flat radius if you want to check that out. So, but anyways, really cool guitar. And uh, for uh, when I'm doing uh, covers like Sticks or Boston that require acoustic tones, this is the guitar I generally use in my cover band Area 51 here in Memphis. So but anyways, there you go. It's a beautiful guitar. Music Man JP-12 John Petrucci Signature. So this is my first venture into Paul Reed Smith guitars. This is a PRS Mark Tremonti Signature uh, single cut. And um, I got this in 2018, uh, around my birthday, uh, from Sweetwater. So basically, as far as the layout goes, we got bridge volume, neck volume, bridge tone, neck tone. And these pickups were designed in conjunction with Mark Tremonti. And uh, we've got a gorgeous maple top going here in a Trampus green color. And what I really like is the contrast between the front and the back. That just looks really cool. So I almost ended up selling this thing, but thank God I didn't. Um, I wasn't hurting for money or anything like that, but... Um, after I played this thing a couple times, I'm like, okay, I can't sell this thing. This thing rocks. So, and uh, as far as the tuners go, they actually lock up here with these thumb screws. So once you pull the string in, you lock that down and the string is in place. And one thing I'll mention too, I don't own a Gibson Les Paul. I used to own one years ago. I actually ended up trading it for a strap because that Gibson Les Paul would not hold tuning to save its life. One thing you notice with the PRS guitars is the strings go straight to the tuning pegs, whereas on a Gibson, they kind of go sideways, so you have to have the nut cut a certain way uh, so that uh, that D and G don't go out of tune as bad. 
because that is one of the things they're known for. So, but like I said, you know, I just think this guitar plays really good. The trim stays in tune really well, and um, it's just overall a killer axe. I'm glad I never got rid of it. So, and um, you know, it just, it just, it's just killer, absolutely killer. Here we have a 1975 reissue Fender Jazz Bass, and uh, you might have seen this on the last cover video I did, uh, Subdivisions by Rush. This was the bass used in that video and on the track, and this thing sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, I did uh, replace the bridge, which originally it had the uh, normal jazz bridge that comes on here, but the reason I replaced it was because the bass was not intonating very well. With the existing bridge so i bought a fender high mass bridge on ebay and replaced it and really the only thing i had to do was tilt the neck a little bit to uh, make up for the height that this bridge is because it sits a little higher than uh the other bridge and made a world of difference this thing plays fantastic and i absolutely love it so and Getty Lee is also my favorite bass player. So some of you might be wondering, how come I don't own a Getty Lee signature guitar or a signature bass? Well, the truth is, is that I wish that bass came in more colors than Tobacco Burst and Black. I found those colors to be kind of boring, to be honest with you. So I thought I would find a jazz bass in my favorite color. And like I said, this thing just plays really good. And it sounds great on the, on the cover. So... When I saw this on Reverb, I got this last year, 2019, around March or May, I think. And when I saw this, I was like, okay, I got to grab it. So I did, and this thing rocks, and I use it pretty regularly whenever I have bass gigs or if I'm doing a YouTube cover. All right, so this here is a Sir Classic S that I acquired from Reverb. It's got 22 stainless steel frets, and it's in a sonic blue finish. Goto Tremolo tone tone volume and uh as far as the pickups this is a sir ssv which kind of has a paf feel to it it's not ridiculously high output but it gets the job done and done nicely uh, i can use this guitar for a lot of styles just like my luke this thing can cover a lot of ground and uh these two single coils are v60 lps and uh we've got sir's branded locking tuners right here and this thing just feels really nice. And what's cool too is if you look closely, there's a cutaway right there that makes access to the high frets very comfortable. I mean, I can get up here no problem whatsoever. So, um, and this thing just feels really good. It's a compound radius. I'm not sure what the measurements are on that uh, compound radius, but I find it very comfortable to play. And this has been my main gigging guitar for the last few months, and it just sounds absolutely amazing. So, you know, they are a little pricey, but for a working musician like myself, um, I can't say enough good things about Sir Guitars. They just play really good. So, and what's cool too, is if you look at the neck, where the, where the plate is, that's another thing that helps with easy access to the frets, is that it's kind of at a slant. So getting access to those high frets is no problem whatsoever. Of course, with the cutaway, that helps too. So outer body, and this thing just rocks. So if you want to hear how it sounds, check out that uh, cover of Subdivisions that I did recently and get a good idea. So this thing rocks. I love it. All right, guys, that wraps it up. Thank you very much for checking out this video and adventure into some of the guitars that I have. If you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. Hit that notification bell and feel free to leave any comments or questions below. And for those of you who are currently subscribed, I thank you very much. That's much appreciated. I hope you guys have a good rest of the day and I will talk to you later. Take care. Check the chocolate.